Oh, cop. You want to keep him in the back? Yeah. Have a little more room that way. Okay, get in, baby. Nate. Come on, we are. Get rid of the coat. Another shoulder strap, huh? You gotta hold his head up. He won't be able to see his face. Okay, now the look. That's it. Let's get out of here. Okay, cop. Now let's see you stretch my skin. This goes to your wife. Now, Pete, I don't see where the big problem is. You show it to her before he doesn't explain it to her. Well, it's not that simple. Ethel sees this, she'll blow a stack. Well, I still think you ought to tell her. I'm sure a thing like this could happen to anybody. Get a little stone, meet a pretty girl. Well, you believe it. Pete, I know enough about photography to know that it's not a pay stop. It's not gimmick. I'm sorry I got you out, Simon. Forget I called you. Pete. Come on, sit down, will you? Let's have a cup of coffee and talk about it. Uh, Miss? Sure you want to have something to eat? No. Yes, sir. A pot of coffee, huh? Well, how'd you get into this mess? You know Nate Mural? The big bookie? Same. I paid his rent a couple of times. Well, we've been after him for over a year. Every time we turn anything, he's found a way out. Yeah, he's got that kind of reputation. Well, that reputation got to Sacramento. A week ago, the word came from the tower. No excuses, stop Miro. So you put on your little helmet and went out to slay the dragon. And I found a way, too. Bobby Reed, you know him? I met him. Uh, hey, honey, uh, put it down right there. Huh? Thank you. He's the one weak link in the operation. I figured if I worked on him, I could pull the string on Miro. Must have pulled the string pretty hard to get in the middle of this. Who's the girl? That's Reed's sister. Miro pays her rent. Yesterday afternoon, I got a call from Reed. He said he had to see me right away. He said, what about? He was sore about the way Miro was treating his sister, Claudia. I set up a meet with Reed, a little place out in Melrose. What did he have to say? Well, he seemed to be scared stiff. He kept going around the edges of Miro's operation. Nothing we didn't know. Well, why the stop? Well, it must have been so he could juice my coffee. You gave him the chance? Well, about one, I went to call last home and told her I'd be late. Did you tell her what you were doing? No, my phone was out in the open. I couldn't talk much. I see. When I got back, Reed had a fresh drink, and there was a cup of coffee for me. About ten minutes later, the walls fell in. Did you know anything that happened after that? I came to at 4.30 this morning in the middle of nowhere. My head was coming apart at the seams. I went home. This morning, this got to the office. Pete, I think you still ought to tell Ethel. Well, she'd say she understood, but I know there'd always be a question in her mind. Well, I still think you ought to tell her. I think you ought to tell your captain, too. Well, maybe you're right. But I still don't want to make a lot of noise until I've explained this to Ethel. All right, we'll do it this way. What time you got? 12 or 10. All right, together we'll try to wash it up by noon. After that, you lay it on the line. You tell Ethel and you tell the captains of the deal. Deal. All right, where do we start? Well, we should start with Bobby. He's got the key. All right, where do we find him? Well, that's the problem. He's not at his apartment. I put out the word, but nobody seems to know where he's dug in. Of a mural? No, oh, no. I don't dare go near him. I see that face of his, I'll belt him one. How about the girl? I don't think she knows what year it is. 
brings us back to Bobby. Well, if we can find him and squeeze him high enough, he'll pop like a ripe peach. All right, whoever finds him first tells the other one. And Pete, if you find him, leave him alone, will you? He can't answer questions with a busted mouth. Okay. Operator, this is ZM12173. I'd like to call OL41654. Hi-Fi answering service. Hey, it's me, Samuel. Look, I want you to check an address for me. Sure. What's the name? Claudia Reed. R-E-E-D. Yeah, that's it. You know, Mr. D. You're beginning to disappoint me. Why is that? Used to be you wanted my address. You don't ask anymore. Sam, I keep asking. You're just not listening. That's the trouble with you, Mr. D. You give up too easily. Bye. Goodbye, Sam. Mr. Diamond. Smokey. Got something hot today? I thought maybe you'd come up with a name for me. It'd be a pleasure. If it was my money, and sometimes it is, I'd drop it right down on Lady Four. She's well, I'm not talking about a horse, Smokey. Huh? I want to find Bobby Reed. Oh, sorry, Mr. Diamond. I'd like to help you, but the word's out. Like Bobby Reed's got the measles. Look, you owe me a couple of favors, Smokey. You come up with this one, everything's quit. Mr. Diamond, there isn't anything I wouldn't do for you. The word is out. Look, a friend of mine's got his neck in the sling. Bobby Reed can get it out. Now, where is he? That's all. That your car? Yeah? Use it. Now. Bobby, a friend of yours? Well, he's an acquaintance. You stay away from Bobby Reed. Stay away. Don't ask any questions. You want to keep that brain of yours between your ears. You forget you even heard the name. Answering service. Hey, Sam, did you get that address for me? 2735 West Vine Street. Thank you. Uh, did I have any other calls? Nothing. Will you be at that Vine Street address? Yeah, I'll check you when I leave, honey. Don't worry, Mr. D. If I don't hear from you within a half hour, I'll call you. Sam, uh, if a man answers, don't hang up. It'll uh, be me. Goodbye. Richard Diamond, I wonder if I'd talk to you for a few minutes. Sure, why not? After all, like they say, diamonds are a girl's best friend. Uh-huh. <laughs> what did you want to talk about? Uh, well, who represents you? Hmm? Your agent. What's his name? Oh, I don't have one. Well, you are an actress, aren't you? Well, I did some little theater things back east, but... Well, I can understand it. A beautiful girl like you, the silver screen's just waiting for you. It is? 
Sure, I bet you there are about a half a dozen studios that give that last popcorn concession to have you on a contract right now. Well, sit down, honey. Thank you. Are you an agent? Well, I'd like to represent you. All right. We'd have to have a contract. Sure. It's been my experience in the past that an artist needs to be uh, protected. I wouldn't want to take advantage of it. You wouldn't? No, no, that's why it'd be a lot better if you had someone to talk for you, like a close friend or a relative. I've got a brother. Well, that'd be just fine. How can I get in touch with him? Gee, I'm not sure right now. I'd have to make a few phone calls. Well, I do it in a hurry because I understand they're casting the picture right now. Oh. Gee, I sure appreciate what you're doing for me. Hi, Claudia. Oh, hi, Jeff. This is Mr. Diamond. My very good friend, Jeff Stark. Oh, yes, we met before, last month, Steve's party, remember? Sure. Jeff, Mr. Diamond's going to be my agent. Your what? He's going to get me into pictures, honest. What's happened, Diamond? You give up the private eye business? Yeah, well, everybody has to have something to fall back on. What's he been saying to you? Well, he wants to write a contract. He wanted to talk to Bobby about it. You tell Murrow about this? Well, he doesn't own me. Shove off. Well, look, Stark. This is none of your business. Look, Claudia, what I've got to talk to Bobby about is important. Diamond? But he said not to tell anybody where he was. What I've got to say to him might save it. Don't come back again, Diamond. If you do, they'll pick you up with a vacuum cleaner. Yeah, hello. Where have you been, Mr. D? I've been trying to reach you. Oh, what's swimming, Sam? What's up? Lieutenant Kyle's been trying to get in touch with you. What about him? He wants you to come right over to 8274 Lexington, apartment 3D. 8274 Lexington? He said to hurry. He said what? He's found Bobby Reed. All right, Sam, I'll check you later. Pete? What's the matter with you? Bobby Reed? You kill him? Well, you better call homicide and start explaining. That'll take more than talk, Richard. He was killed with my gun. Careful, there's nothing on it. How do you know it's yours? A serial number. How'd it get here? I don't know. Oh, come on, Pete, snap out of it. How did it get here? Well, they probably took it from me last night while I was passed out. Didn't you notice this morning that you didn't have it? Well, a gun's a gun. The way I felt this morning, I didn't stop to use a microscope. Serial numbers go. Looks like it was done with acid. Well, at least now we know what Miro wanted. How'd you find him? I got a tip. I just walked in. You call anyone else? No. Was he killed here? Looks like it. This pillow was used to muffle a shot. Well, we're not doing ourselves any good sitting around here. You got any bright ideas? Got to be something in this place to go. I checked before you came. Well, let's get out of here then. Hey, Richard. This will keep you off the hook for a while. Richard. I'm not going to go through with it. I didn't kill Reed. I'm going to tell the story just the way it happened. Hey, you do that, Pete. You tell it the way it happened and then read tomorrow's headlines. Cop kills Bookie. In three months' time, they'll uh, print a retraction of your acquittal on page 46. Nobody reads the results. They only read the accusations. What happens to your wife? What happens to the rest of the honest cops in this town? 
They've worn ashes before. This doesn't concern you anyway. Well, you're open for a year in jail for what you've just done. Now, from here on in, you're out. There's no reason for you to put your neck in a ringer. There's the biggest reason in the world to live here. I don't like to see an honest cop get pushed around by a two-bit bookmaker. Go on, let's get out of here before they put glass in the frame. It'll pay off. I don't know how or when, but you'll collect lives for today. Sure, and uh, Confederate money? Mural. Yes? Is Mr. Muro in? I'm sorry, he's in conference. If you'd like to give me your name, I'll make an appointment. Is that his office? Yes. Look, I told you he was in conference. Now, where is she now? What is this? I tried to keep him out, Mr. Muro. I told him you were in conference, but... Don't worry about it. Yes, sir. What do you want? He's the one who was bugging Claudia this morning. An agent, my foot. Shut up. What do you want? You. I'll be snow in Hollywood Park before that happens. Now get out of here. You're not being very cooperative, Mr. Muro. Yes, sir? Come here, the police. Send them right up here. I figure you got three minutes to start moving. What's the charge? Murder. How's that fit, cop? Murder in the first. Now take it easy, Pete. You're never going to make that stick, Mr. Muro. You're still alive. Bobby isn't. Just came in over all local stations. You know, Carl had nothing to do with it. Do I? But I know what the courts believe. That's two different things. Look, Richard, let's not waste any more time. Let me have him for a while. You take it easy, Pete. You touch this guy and they'll really have something to hang on you. I've got nothing to lose. You've got a lot to lose. Now, the police will be here in a minute. You go outside and make it easy for them to find you. And take that errand boy with you, too. You stay here, Jeff. Get your hand off me, cop. Oh. Oh. Now, you sit down and don't move. I see a muscle twitch, I'll break your back. You call the police? I sure did. You better get out of here. Well, supposing we just sit here and wait for them. Don't hurt your hands, Richard. Now, let's be honest with each other, Mr. Muro. You didn't hear about Bobby on the radio, did you? What's your price? You haven't got enough money. You got a confession from me this way. It won't stand up. You know that. I know it. But after little Miss Claudia reads what you're going to write, I think she'll help things along. Your time's running out, Mr. Muro. I haven't got much choice. You're putting your head on a block, Diamond. You get me, my boys will get you. When I get through with you, your boys won't know you. So. He's got a gun. Why, well, sure, lady. He's supposed to have it. Hi, Lieutenant. How are you, Corbett? What's the beef, Lieutenant? You got the story? Well, don't you stand there. They killed Mr. Muro. Diamond. 
What are you doing here? Well, I thought it was the Kansas picnic. You gotta watch that hard side. It'll catch up to you. Little note to the DA from Mr. Muro. See if you can file this. Happy birthday. Diamond, you're under arrest. What for? Assault and murder. Lieutenant, I'm afraid I'll have to take your gun. He's making the same charge against you. I told you. Calls aren't closed. Let's wait for the final count. <laughs> When they showed Claudia the confession, she screamed like an eagle. Laid the whole thing at Muro's feet. You know, it's still not clear to me. How did we get out of the murder charge? Charlie. Who? The janitor at Bobby's place. You remember the refrigerator? I sure do. Well, it seems that he was taking the old one out of the apartment next to Bobby's place this morning. He saw Muro going into Bobby's place. So? So, Charlie swore he was in Bobby's apartment. Claudia swore he had my gun. Muro decided he could do better with a plea of guilty in the second. In the second, that won't go, will it? I don't think so. Hey, what happened to Claudia? Well, I'm not going to press charges. She's in the clear. Oh, Lieutenant, you've just made my day. It's a pleasure, Mr. Diamond. Can I give you a lift? No, I want to stick around here, what? Oh, before I forget it, I picked this up for you downtown this morning. What is it? It's an application for an agent's license. I understand Claudia still wants to get into the movies. Honey, you have an agent? Mm-hmm. My husband. Yeah, that figures. Uh...